You know how it's getting down. Chafu sio poa. Wanasema gawao ni sawa tuzuri, right? Aina vanga. Baby pole. Tuwapikie ndugu zetu hawa makofi jameni kwa kutuzungumzia. Asante sana. Sixty years ago, on a day like this, Kenya took its final step of the freedom struggle to become a sovereign republic. I am delighted to have the privilege of leading our nation in celebrating this milestone in our journey to national independence. According to the vision of our forefathers who fought for this country's freedom, independence was intended to bestow on us the gift of political as well as economic self-determination. This anniversary gives us the opportunity to gather as a family and reflect together on how we have fared over the course of six decades. It is clear that we have made undeniable progress on many fronts and as a result, our nation has become, has come a long way in the right direction. Before that first Jamuhuri, that first Jamuhuri day, Kenya's sovereignty was exercised by an unelected foreign and colonial power for the benefit of an occupying minority. We have since matured from a single party state to a competitive, multi-party democracy and a devolved system of governance with robust checks and balances under the constitution that was ratified by the people of Kenya in the year 2010. Along with the maturity of our democracy, Kenya's institutions of governance have evolved significantly. Parliament, for example, is now, more than ever, an independent assertive organ of government with its own calendar and its own budget. As a result of this autonomy, party positions on important national issues are much more clearly defined. And whenever circumstances and the national interest demand bipartisan engagement across the political divide is pursued in a structured manner. Proposals currently before Parliament on the enhancement of the autonomy of our county assemblies prove that our assemblies at the county level are also making encouraging progress in their maturation into independent watchdogs, policymakers, and representatives of people at our counties. Devolution is growing its roots deeper to connect with the soul and spirit of our nation. We have consistently allocated more resources and made them available on time and supported measures to further empower county assemblies to become good stewards. Our political culture has also evolved considerably. We are now committed to making sure that at every election, our democratic competition is less about personalities and tribes and more about issues and the national interest. As a result, the last general election, which serves as a very solid beacon of this new direction, reflects the true will and confidence of the people of Kenya in democracy. Without the rule of law, ladies and gentlemen, our democracy falls short of serving us as a people. The judiciary, which is our nation's foremost anchor of the rule of law, continues to grow in its capacity to authoritatively discharge its constitutional mandate and make justice a right of every Kenyan. To provide effective and efficient services to the people, we have enhanced resources available to the judiciary, promoted respect for its independence, and submitted to its authority in order to deepen our credentials as a nation guided by the rule of law. 
to complete this framework of institutions designed to safeguard and promote constitutionalism and the rule of law, our constitutional commissions and independent officers have evolved to discharge their mandate in accordance with the Constitution and in the most constructive manner in support of good governance. The IEBC, Commission for Revenue Allocation, the Salaries Remuneration Commission, among many, have lived up to their constitutional expectations and Kenyans' aspirations. Today, there is much to celebrate about the strides we have made for the last six decades. The democratic credentials of our political culture are solid and our institutional maturity beyond any doubt. Fellow countrymen and women, 60 years ago, we certainly were far from where we are today. The progress we have made is undeniable. Our peers at that time, nations like South Korea, Singapore, and Malaysia, have similarly made immense progress in democratic and institutional maturity. They have, however, made much more economic progress than we and as a consequence, we are much more advanced today. They are much more advanced today than we are. The point at which we stand today is the culmination of the collective endeavor of our nation's founding generation and those that came after them. The vision which inspired their struggle and sacrifice was one of a united, free, democratic, and economically prosperous nation. They fought for true sovereignty, which envisioned political democracy and economic prosperity. Our forefathers made huge sacrifices to win for Kenya the freedom we celebrate today. And the generations that followed have made their contributions progressively to bring our state, society, and economy to what it is presently. We gather today to express our gratitude, celebrate their legacy, and contemplate our contribution to accelerating future progress. In our democratic and political journey, we have made tremendous sacrifices and progress from a single party to multi-party. Personality and ethnic parochialism to issue-based and national politics, from violence and intolerance discourse to orderly and peaceful elections. However, we have not made as much progress with our economy. Our savings as a percentage of GDP is dismal. The gap between the rich and the poor has not reduced. Many, especially young people, don't have jobs and our revenues as a percentage of GDP remain low. Our generation must therefore take up the unfinished job of actualizing economic prosperity as our contribution to perfecting Kenya's national sovereignty. We owe this to those who made huge sacrifices to bestow on us a nation of promise. We owe it to one another to the youth, women, children of Kenya, and to each and every one of us. The responsibility of our generation, beginning with this administration, is to make smart choices, unnecessary sacrifices, just as our forefathers and those who came after them did. And the choice is to match our economic progress with our democratic and political achievements. This is the assignment we took up on day one, the 13th of September 2022, and which we have been painstakingly undertaking for the past year. Our focus has been firmly about the ways and means to transform our economy, making the right decisions, necessary sacrifices, and smart choices to set Kenya on a path of economic renaissance. This transformation began with all of us, as the people of Kenya, 
making immense sacrifices and huge contributions together to pull back our country from the brink of debt distress. The greatness and patriotic devotion of the people of Kenya have been on display during the past year. Together, we have made the right choices, sometimes taken very difficult and painful decisions to steer Kenya back from the edge of a catastrophic cliff of debt distress and move our country in a new direction. There is every reason to believe that without serious sacrifices and hard work over the past year, the crisis, threats, and challenges in the global economic and geopolitical environment confronting us would have overwhelmed us, as indeed it has many countries. We have had to make our contribution to the struggle for the nation's economic sovereignty. We have had to cut back significantly on expenditure and to defer the implementation of critical development programs to stabilize our economy. The policy measures required to mobilize necessary revenues have been difficult, but they were our only way and means of escape. Though painful, the sacrifices we have made, which would not only make our freedom fighters proud, are also absolutely necessary at time as this and in situations that we find ourselves and is the guarantee of our nation's economic stability. Proudly, these sacrifices have paid off. I can now confirm without fear of any contradiction that Kenya is safely out of the danger of debt distress and that our economy is on a stable footing. The economic indicators point to good news. Inflation is now 6.8% down from a high of 9.2 a year ago. In the last six months, our GDP has grown at a rate of 5.4%, making Kenya the 29th fastest growing economy in the world, according to the World Bank. There is no question about it. What we have done together, the price we have paid together, and the sacrifices we have made together have rescued our country from an economic catastrophe. After navigating our ways out of the difficult and complicated debt situation, our second action is to accelerate economic progress, which is the cardinal assignment of our generation. Wazalenda Wenzangu, our human capital our innovative, smart-working, professional labor force is probably the single most potent arsenal we have to drive our economic progress. Globally, Kenyans have excelled in semi-skilled, skilled, and professional occupations. Our expenditure on training, learning, and education in general is a most appropriate investment in the development of the human capital necessary in our economic progress. Recognizing this, we have increased the total allocation to our education sector by an additional 127 billion this year. Out of this, 46 billion will support the new university funding model that gives equal chance to every child in Kenya to acquire university education an additional $9 billion to cover our TVET funding model and the hiring of an extra 2,000 tutors necessary for our TVET education, an additional $47 billion to enable TSC, Teacher Service Commission, had hire 56,000 new teachers and other interventions, and $24 billion for junior secondary school and to support the construction of additional infrastructure. To cover the chronic classroom deficit in the city of Nairobi, we have undertaken to build 3,500 additional classrooms in the city of Nairobi with the first 1 billion allocated 
in this year's budget. And we are going to work with all members of parliament to make sure that the city of Nairobi, the seat of government, and the pride of our nation does not leave any child behind when it comes to education. Agriculture, ladies and gentlemen, plays a central and pivotal role in our economy, contributing to food security, supplying raw materials for our agro-processing and value addition and manufacturing for domestic and market and, and export markets, creating jobs and also creating wealth. Only specific, targeted and deliberate interventions will enhance our agricultural productivity and overall production. This began with the registration of farmers, provision of crop-specific fertilizers, reforms in the tea, coffee, sugarcane, and edible oil sector, provisions of mobile dryers, and other interventions underway across the nation so as to reduce the cost of food, which consumes 56% of household incomes, to reduce by half our food import bill, which today stands at Kenya shillings 500 billion, and also to increase our exports. Further, 400 fresh produce markets, including 20 in the city of Nairobi, 47 county aggregation industrial parks, as well as six special economic zones, are under various stages of implementation to enhance value addition, agro-processing, and manufacturing, and also to stimulate economic growth in every part of Kenya. Economic productivity and general well-being are, significant, are significantly hampered by a population that is prone to ill health. Individual and family medical expenditure drain household incomes and erode family savings in many cases, leading to financial ruin and destitution. Fellow countrymen, our universal health coverage plan seeks, to, seeks a paradigm shift in the provision of health care from curative to a largely preventive and uh, promotive approach. Our radical transformation, transformative plan has seen the enactment of four acts of parliament which I thank our legislature, as well as the rollout of 100,000 community health promoters, for which I thank all county government for participating. I commend counties who have already paid community health promoters their stipends and commit that the national government will pay our portion beginning the end of this month. The laws we have enacted now provide a framework in the Emergency Chronic and Critical Inless Fund that will liberate the people of Kenya from the burden of catastrophic hospital bills in the treatment of conditions like cancer, diabetes, hypertension, and other critical and chronic conditions. Additionally, the new funding model that is fair equitable and progressive will see the government of Kenya for the first time pay the cost of health insurance for all vulnerable Kenyans who have no ability to pay. Those currently paying 500 will have their contributions reduced with the least paying Kenya shillings 300. To enhance efficiency and eliminate pilferage in the healthcare system, the new digital law will underpin the digitization of the entire health service delivery framework. While empirical evidence, ladies and gentlemen, shows us that economic growth has the potential to create jobs and the measures enumerated above will create opportunities for employment, these interventions on their own will not create the kind and scale of employment needed to deal with unemployment in Kenya today. For employment and job creation to be at the scale necessary to make a significant dent 
on our employment status, unemployment status, and deal effectively with prevailing challenges, our interventions must be ambitious and systematic, consistent and intentional, as well as deliberate and progressive. Kenyans, our housing program is fundamentally a massive, deliberate and systematic job creation mechanism. Apart from the thousands of direct employment opportunities in construction and associated services, the housing scheme directly supports the formal and informal manufacturing of materials, fixtures, fittings, and accessories required in construction. They range, those employed range from architects, engineers, quantity surveyors, site workers, artisans, fabricators, electricians, plumbers, and many more. The housing program is a bottom-up job creator. There are 33 active housing development sites already employing 120,000 people in various parts of the country. Another 31 sites are undergoing evaluation to begin construction next month. Other sites are in other sites in various stages of design across the country, by next year, the entire country, in our estimation, will be a bustling construction site with housing projects proceeding in every county and every constituency. Our strategic focus is to construct hundreds of thousands of housing units while creating millions of jobs across Kenya. Remember, South, Af uh, South Korea, Singapore, and Malaysia undertook these major housing works some 40 years ago, and that is why their economies, among many other factors, are ahead of us. Yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, I signed into law amendments to the National Government County uh, Constituency Development Fund Act, which set out a framework to anchor the development of ICT hubs in each of the 1,450 wards in the country. I salute members of parliament for the partnership to expand our digital superhighway infrastructure to provide training opportunities and create thousands of digital job opportunities for young people across Kenya. We are also rolling out training and digital job opportunities in our TVETs countywide. Already, 23,000 computers have been distributed with many students now monetizing their skills online in our TVET institutions. We are also in discussion with county governments to jointly expand vocational training centers to accommodate ICT hub infrastructure so as to enhance the digital jobs footprint across Kenya. The digital job ecosystem, ladies and gentlemen, we are building is an intentional, dynamic, and innovative mechanism to create jobs in the technology and digital space. We have dedicated specific attention to infrastructure development to promote connectivity through a nationwide network of transport and communication infrastructure, actualize the constitutional right to clean and save water in adequate quantities as enshrined in the Article 43 of the Constitution and connect all Kenyans to electricity across the country. On Jamuhuri Day last year, I announced a grand plan to transform Kenyan sports and creatives into a significant industry to expand livelihoods opportunities for our youth through the government flagship Talanda Hela Initiative which we officially unveiled in June this year. 
Our sportsmen and women continue to make our country proud with their conquest far and wide. Our women football, our women volleyball, sorry, and, and men's rugby teams have qualified for the Paris Olympics in 2024. Our athletes continue to excel at various global events as is well exemplified by the shining performance in the long and middle distance races. Today, I have conferred upon our world-beating athlete, Faith Kibiegon, the rank and status of Elder of the Order of the Golden Heart, the highest honor our country awards its citizens who illuminate the path of excellence. She has earned her place at the very top, from running barefoot to breaking two world records within a year is the ultimate stage of heroism. Faith's journey is an inspiration to all our young and aspiring athletes. I equally salute Ferdinando Manyala, Mary Mora, Kevin Kiptum, Emmanuel Wanyonyi, Faith Cherotich, who have also reg registered their presence in the world stage and they too will be fitted. This administration has also taken deliberate steps to build and invest in the creative economy. First, the famous Grammy Awards have a partnership with us and starting January, the Innovation Studios of Hollywood have agreed to begin shoot of curriculum education sponsored coding program in primary and secondary schools to reach 4 million learners. The partnership will also train 42,000 teachers. <coughs> I have good news for our creatives and those who imagine and produce content through Facebook and Instagram. Just yesterday, I mean just yesterday, Meta committed to helping creators in Kenya earn money for crafting original content. Following a pilot program with eligible creators in the country, Meta will be expanding monetization opportunities and allowing more creators to earn a living doing what they love. Kenya possesses impressive credentials as a source of highly professional human capital with highly educated, trained, skilled, and dynamic young people. We have systematically and intentionally negotiated separate bilateral agreements with countries in the Middle East, Europe, and the Americas to connect our skilled workforce with opportunities globally. This will provide exposure to thousands of Kenyans to work in international organizations, engage in global assignments, and monetize their skills and talents as they enhance their incomes and personal development. Millions of Kenyans already working abroad have been great ambassadors for our country and have made huge contributions through their remittances to the development of Kenya. Ndugua Kenya. Kenya remains committed to driving climate action, and I am proud that we can, we can play a significant role shaping the climate agenda on the continent. We have demonstrated leadership which has been recognized both on the continent and beyond. And we must continue to play our part, both domestically and on the global stage. Recently, I launched the Africa Green Industrialization Initiative in partnership with the United Arab Emirates and several other African heads of states at COP28 in Dubai. The goal of the initiative is to enable businesses to build rapidly in Kenya using our renewable energy resources and across our continent. In keeping with our commitment, ladies and gentlemen, to correct the market failure in the provision of affordable credit 
especially to those who have no access to any collateral and to free millions of Kenyans trapped in the credit rating maze. The Hustler Fund has grown to become the largest financial inclusion program in Kenya, dispersing Kenya shillings 42 billion to more than 21 million borrowers across Kenya. A week ago, we celebrated the Hustler Fund's first anniversary. Borrowers on the fund have saved Kenya shillings 2 billion with a repayment rate of 75% nationally. As promised, we have already enhanced credit limits for over 1.2 million borrowers and spend 500 million to match long-term savings on a ratio of Kenya shillings one for every Kenya shillings two saved. At the end of this month, just in a few days, every saver will be paid an attractive interest rate of 12% on all their savings. Over 7.7 .7 million people are regular borrowers on the Hustler Fund platform. The fund will be enhanced from next month with specific financial products to provide additional enterprise and business facilities for existing Mamamboga and Boda Boda circles across Kenya. We undertook to build a culture of savings in Kenya as an effort to create long-term investment resources to fund our growth and development and provide better retirement for working Kenyans. The new NSSF contribution model has enhanced monthly contributions by four and a half times. Consequently, the fund will raise an additional 400 billion in the next five years, tripling the value of the fund from 300 billion to over 1 trillion by 2027. Furthermore, our countrymen and women no longer have to wait for over three months to receive their retirement benefits. Owing to the digitization and automation, NSSF benefit processing turnaround time has improved significantly from an average of 82 days to 10 days, and with a further reduction envisaged in processing period to come down to one day by next year. We are also undertaking the expansion of retirement benefits coverage to 15 million Kenyans currently active in the informal sector through product innovation and bottom-up enrollment strategies at the grassroots level. Ladies and gentlemen, we made a commitment to our dear citizens who are elderly, orphaned, and those who live with severe disability that they shall receive their social protection stipends before public servants, including the president, receive their salaries. We have kept our word and delivered on this commitment. Consequently, all the 1,200,000 eligible beneficiaries now receive their stipends on time before we are all paid our public as public servants. We have, however, allocated an additional 2 billion shillings for newly enrolled beneficiaries who are undergoing verification at the moment and we will begin to disburse their stipends by 1st March next year. This program has had challenges with the beneficiaries traveling long distances and spending, and spending considerable portions of their stipend on logistics. Working with Safaricom, we have structured a new delivery mechanism for all our stipend earning beneficiaries to receive their stipends from M-Pesa agents in their localities. Orphans and persons living with severe disability will begin using this new mechanism this month in a few days. The elderly will, however, start in January 
because the process is being finalized. I commend Safaricom for demonstrating corporate patriotism and providing this service free of charge. Ndugwa Kenya, Kenyans are doing their part to support the effort to stabilize and grow our economy. Their sacrifices and contributions are essential and must be honored. We are therefore taking strong measures to ensure that all public resources are administered transparently, efficiently, and in a secure manner. One of our, most, one of our best interventions is the use of digital technology and the migration of all government services and revenue collection to a single pay bill. Since this measure was implemented, we have witnessed a significant rise in total revenues collected. Besides enhancing revenue collection, digitization has eliminated revenue leakage through corruption and theft. It is most important that we sustain this progress in promoting integrity, transparency, and efficiency in resource management. And for this reason, I direct that all agencies observe the December 31st deadline to finalize the migration to e-citizen platform. It is only right that I match this admirable commitment by the people of Kenya to do their part in getting the economy going and give an assurance that all taxes collected by government shall be put to their intended use and that no single shilling, no Kenyan shilling, shall be lost through embezzlement, theft, or corruption. I urge our justice, law, and order institutions led by the judiciary and the anti-corruption agencies to discharge their mandate without fear, favor, ill will, or prejudice. I also give my personal undertaking to support the timely prosecution of all those involved in corruption without regard to their social, economic, ethnic, political status, or connection, or any other consideration whatsoever. This is the minimum that is expected of, of us in fulfillment of our constitutional mandate, and Kenyans deserve no less. The story of our nation's sovereignty cannot be fully told without mentioning the fundamental character of our territorial integrity, economic prosperity, political democracy, the rule of law, and the integrity of our social fabric. Our national security apparatus have remained strong, a strong shield against terrorism, crime, and insecurity. As we continue to invest resources into the security sector, we continue to expect continuous improvement in its overall capacity to keep our nation's boundaries inviolable, our people's lives and property safe and secure. <clears throat> I cannot forget the public service. Every member of our civil service has been entrusted with a rare opportunity to make their unique contribution to national transformation. As such, they are at a most advantageous position to demonstrate our national values and principles of governance for the benefit of all Kenyans. Today, I appreciate you for being loyal servants, dependable professionals, and true patriots, and urge you to do more as our people's partners in the transformation of Kenya. Much has been given to you by the people of Kenya, and therefore, much more is expected of you. On behalf of the people, I shall hold you to the highest standards of efficiency, effectiveness, transparency, and accountability in serving 
our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, infrastructure development is a critical enabler for transformation of agriculture, delivery of health, job creation, and overall economic growth. As a result, our investment in road and rail network, electricity generation and connection, and water harvesting, storage and reticulation continue to be a critical component of our development strategy. A comprehensive multi-year plan is progressively being implemented to support the overall socio-economic development of the country. Our world, ladies and gentlemen, our world and the good in it belongs to those who are not shy to embrace globalization. Kenyans have shown time and again that we are not afraid of the world beyond our borders. We venture abroad fearlessly and warmly welcome our visitors from near and far. This is not by accident. The scientific history account of early humanity is told by various agrological sites in our country. In short, we are the first home of all humanity and we joyfully embrace our ancestral task of welcoming humanity home. That Kenya is the home of humanity is a scientific fact that fills us with pride and underscores our rich heritage. It is with great pleasure as president of this extraordinary country to make a historic announcement of the decision of the government of Kenya. Beginning January 2024, Kenya will be a visa-free country. It shall no longer be necessary for any person from any corner of the globe to carry the burden of applying for a visa to come to Kenya. To echo the call of the Turkana people to the world, Tobongu Lore, a simple message to humanity, welcome home. This is why the government, <clears throat> this is why the government of Kenya has abolished the requirement of visas for all visitors to implement this new policy we have developed a digital platform to ensure that all travelers to Kenya are identified in advance on an electronic platform. Consequently, all travelers will obtain electronic travel authorization as they come to Kenya. Ladies and gentlemen, I have set out an account clearly showing that although much remains to be done to bring economic progress up to the level of our political maturity and to transform our economy to the ranks of our historical peers globally, we nevertheless have real cause to celebrate the contributions made by each one of us to the collective national endeavor in keeping with the aspirations of the brave and indomitable patriots who set us on this path to national glory. We must now go forth with greater resolve, inspired by the heroic achievements of those who came before us, affirmed by the confidence that our work matters for increasing our heritage and glory, encouraged by the progress we, have, we are making and determined to accomplish our generation's solemn obligation to make this nation a true Jamuhuri of people, free, prosperous, secure, and democratic. Ladies and gentlemen, I conclude by thanking all Kenyans, wa Kenya wote, walio shiriki pamoja na sisi, kuakikisha ya kwamba muda mgumu ambao tumekuwa nayo, sote tumeungana, tumeshirikiana, na kila mtu amefanya sehemu yake kuakikisha kwamba Kenya inasonga mbele. Pia vile nimetangaza hapa wale wazee 
wale, uh, watu wanaoishi na ulemavu na pia wale watoto wetu ambao ni orphans tumesema ya kwamba wamekuwa wakiangaika siku nyingi kwenda kutafuta pesa ya cash transfer sasa tumepadilisha sera na pesa zao za cash transfer itapatikana katika kijiji yao hawata safiri tena ama kuangaika kusafiri safari mrefu kutafuta stipends zao vile vile tumekubaliana ya kwamba kwa mara ya kwanza serikali ya Kenya italipia wale hawana uwezo ili wawe na bima ya afya ya NHIF so that kila mkenya awe ni, na bima ya afya na tumekubaliana vile vile ya kwamba funding model mpya ama mpango wetu mpya wa kulipa pesa ya bima ya afya sasa itawawezesha wale wamekuwa wakilipa shilingi tano pia tutawapunguzia ije shilingi tatu ndio tuhakikishe kwamba kila mkenya ako na bima ya afya na hakuna mkenya tena vile nimesema hapa hakuna mkenya tena akiwa na ugonjwa wa saratani ama kanza ama diabetes ambaye atauza mali yake ili aweze kulipia gharama ya hospitali kwa sababu sasa tuko na hazina maalum ambaye itashughulikia wa Kenya wote ambao wako na magonjwa ambayo ni chronic kama vile kansa ama saratani kwa hivyo mimi nawatakia heri i take this very early opportunity to wish every kenyan and all our friends near and far a merry christmas and a prosperous 2024 asanteni sana thank you very much god bless you mungu wabariki sana